that's one of my favorite places to stop. It's super hot out today. It's like 95, feels like 105 kind of thing. And I gotta keep the bus around 60 to 62 mile an hour to keep it at about 180, 185. Uh, the old buses like this, you just can't push them in the heat. You just gotta drive by your temperature gauge and study your speedometer and you'll be perfectly fine. So before you even think about driving in really warm temperatures, or actually driving your bus, period, you really need to have one of these. An infrared thermometer it shoots a little laser beam, then it gives you a temperature of what it's pointed at. Um, you definitely want to make sure that your gauges, your temperature gauge, is extremely accurate. Um, if it's more than a couple of degrees off, that can be really dangerous for you. So you want to make sure that you're shooting the thermostat housing, the water manifold, uh, the top of the radiator, the oil cooler, those kinds of things. You're looking for any kind of changes and make sure that definitely the thermostat housing right where your temperature sending unit is, is exactly what your gauges are. Um, you really need to be able to completely trust and rely on that. And then I use this to shoot my hub temperatures, my brake temperature, in case I have a you know, brake you know, brake hanging up or a, a hub going bad or something like that, you'll see an abnormal temperature and this kind of a device is great to use for that. So I use it all the time, but definitely for, for run, running in warm weather, you need to make sure that your temperature gauge on your dashboard is very accurate. And sometimes I've seen them 10, 15, 20 degrees off. Sometimes like they go from 180 to 250 and there's no other markings in between there and you don't even know where you're at. Um, you could make other markings on there with a gauge like this or just buy a more accurate. I use a digital gauge. It tells me exactly to the exact degree of where I'm at. Um, I love that kind of precise information. And then you just drive with the, uh, the temperature gauge as your speedometer. And on the really hot days when it's, you know, 90, 100, 105 degrees outside, um, you're not going to be able to go flat out usually. Now, I added a, an additional radiator, uh, a new radiator to this bus uh, about two years ago. It's got a whole extra row in it. So I went from four rows to five rows. So I've got about 20% 20, 20 more cooling efficiency on the new radiator. Um, and then I can also turn on my heater if I need to, the, the heater core, which is basically just a giant radiator where you can eliminate some of the heat, which you don't want to do it on a hot summer day, but in an emergency, you can do that, um, to help keep things cool. You never want to overheat the engine. Uh, my, my personal things, I try not to go over 200 degrees with this bus. Uh, if I do, it's only for, you know, a few seconds, uh, at 205, I've, I've already made plans to completely change what I'm doing and get off the road and, uh, and let it cool down. Uh, I, I don't even want to flirt with the disaster zone area on these. Um, if you keep it below 200, 205, you're in really good shape. But uh, for, for me, my personal limit that I set is I try to keep it under 200. Um, it'll do it. it. It'll be fine at 200. You're not going to hurt it. Um, but it's definitely not as good for it as it is at 180, 190. So I try to keep it at 180, 185. Um, when I climb a hill, I'll let it go up to 200. But I, I try not to go over 200. That's just my own... I'm not saying that's what you have to do, but that is what I do, and my engine is not going to get burned up. Well, there we have the bike rack mounted. Bikes are just sitting on it right now, I don't have them attached, but that's what we worked on before we left. I just didn't get it done. We had to extend it out because that bumper swings down. I had to do some special, my brother-in-law helped me make a, extend that mount out a little bit. Um, we got those bikes, two bikes together as a pair for 80 bucks on Craigslist. They're in good shape. So I thought that was a good deal. But, uh, just a couple more little, little adjustments to make on it. And we're going to use different kind of straps than the ones that came with it. I don't really trust those. Uh, and then we're going to put locks on it as well. Even though I only paid 80 bucks for the pair, I don't want them ripped off. So not a bad deal. Got the bus washed today. Uh, I made a mistake by leaving that sand on there. It really ate into the, cause this is polished aluminum, not uh, anodized. And it really took a toll on the polishing from leaving that dirt on there. Not really a big deal because I was gonna have to probably rebuff it after Burning Man anyways. So I'm certainly not gonna do it now. And then again later, cause it's, it's about 16 hours work to buff that bus up. And I haven't done it and it's been about a year and a half. I think it was last a, week, a year ago January I think is when I did it um, but I will probably go ahead and put some kind of a wax on it just to help protect it against the playa dust 
um, just a little bit. So I'll do that, but uh, it's gonna rain here again today in a little bit, of course. Um, so make, making progress on it. Okay, we are back home uh, in Indiana. I got a call from one of our clients, Staples Allen, who has the 4104 bus uh, that was at the church down in Florida. And he had a problem where his water pump seized up. His bus was overheating, uh, sheared off the drive coupling to the water pump and the engine overheated and it's running terribly, something, something seriously wrong with it. So he pulled the head off of it and then he contacted me and uh, I told him I could, he has a two valve head on his 4104 and I told him I could sell him my four valve head, or my two valve head so that I can get the four valve head put on my bus. So I went ahead and came home so that I can get things going with that, get my four valve head sent off to the shop tomorrow, get it machined, and then like maybe Tuesday, pull the head for him. Uh, it's just a good opportunity for me to get rid of the head. Uh, it's, it's in perfect shape. Uh, he needs a two valve head. I have a two valve head that just came out of the machine shop. It's only got a thousand miles on it. So that'll be good. Uh, so I'll be able to get rid of that head and then have the money for that to pay for my uh, four valve head to come out of the machine shop. So that'll be good. Um, and then uh, on the way home, we stopped in uh, South Bend, Indiana. Uh, it wasn't much out of the way, about 12 miles out of the way to go to. Uh, somebody contacted me that watches the videos here. They said they had a uh, Pure Sign Magnum uh, 2000 watt inverter for sale, 650 bucks. Thought that was a good deal. Uh, new in the box. So I went there to pick it up and got there, and it wasn't actually Pure Sign. It was, I think it's modified sign. It didn't actually say on it. We couldn't look it up. There was nothing that said Pure Sign, and they usually brag about that. So uh, I ended up passing on that, came home, and then ordered a Magnum Pure Sign 2000 watt inverter. It'll be here in about a week. Uh, I'll be able to get that in the bus. Uh, just because of the computers and stuff like that, I really wanted to have the Pure Sign. That's what I used to have in there. Uh, so I, I wanted to have that again. So I'll put a link, uh, Amazon link to that in the description if somebody's interested in it. Um, thought I got a pretty good deal on it. Um, and then other than that, uh, you know, getting things ready for Burning Man, uh, the bikes, we got the tickets, everything's ready to go. Uh, kind of give a uh, little shout out to my friend Dirk. Uh, hopefully he'll recover here soon. He was the guy where we were out in Vegas. He had a 4106. We worked on it in the fall and he uh, fell off a roof uh, a couple weeks, maybe not even two weeks ago and got hurt real bad. Uh, broken pelvis, internal injuries, uh, broken ribs, all kinds of craziness. Uh, so he's not going to be going to Burning Man. So we're going to be staying at a different camp. Uh, we're going to be staying at the skate camp. Uh, so another bus, uh, guy that I know, uh, Joey, uh, who has a bus, uh, invited us to stay there. So we're going to be staying at the skate camp. So that should be a lot of fun. We're really looking forward to it. But I got a lot of buses to work on between now and then. So not, not a lot of time to, to think about that. So anyways, just give me some updates on what's going on. Thanks a lot. I got some new tools. Uh, I stopped at Lowe's and I got this Craftsman torque wrench. Um, it's a half inch drive and it goes up to 250 pounds. My current half inch only goes to 150 that I have. And then I have to go up to my three quarter inch drive to go to stuff, you know, between 150 uh, and 250. So now I got this, I'll be able to do it uh, all with one. Uh, it was under hundred bucks. Um, Tyler has basically the same thing made by uh, DeWalt, which I believe is the same company. So it's probably exactly the same. And then uh, another new tool that I got is uh, Bus Grease Monkey Fan Earl Clemens. Uh, saw that I broke that uh, Mac Tools uh, six point uh, nine sixteenths, so he went ahead and sent me out a snap on. Uh, got that in the mail from from Earl, so I appreciate that. Um, I still have not got that uh, Mac Tools one warranty yet, so I don't know when I'm going to see a Mac guy next. But uh, that's nice. Uh, I have a really nice toolbox for everybody. Sent me one tool at a time, <laughs> but uh, th thanks, thanks Earl. I do appreciate stuff like that.